As I walk around UCD, the ground appears to be pretty flat. But if I were to fly to Australia, I'd have no choice but to follow a curved path because I live on a sphere. This is an example of what we call curved space. Now, what if I told you that matter curves space? Nobody really knows why, but you and me and the Earth and the Sun and everything else in our universe curves the space around it. The more massive something is, the more curved space becomes. Luckily for us, we don't curve space all that much, otherwise things would get very weird very quickly and we'd all start to look like Matthew McConaughey from Interstellar. But it turns out that even the Earth, which is a lot bigger than you and I, still doesn't curve space all that much. In fact, even the Sun doesn't curve space that much. And this is where black holes come in. Black holes are massive enough and dense enough that they noticeably curve the space around them. If that wasn't weird enough, imagine we have not one, but two black holes orbiting each other, a little bit like the way the Earth orbits the Sun. As the black holes move around each other, the space they move into becomes curved, and the space they leave behind flattens. It's as if space itself is moving. And this is what we mean by a gravitational wave, the motion of space itself. When black holes orbit each other, they eventually collide. And when they collide, they change the shape of space around them so violently that they produce gravitational waves that ripple out through space and time. These waves we are now able to detect, and they encode information about the black holes from whence they came, such as the size of the black holes and how far away they are. My job is to look at what happens when two very different sized black holes collide. That is, when a very big black hole and a very small black hole are orbiting each other, I'll be looking at what kind of gravitational waves do they produce. Now, there's also the small matter of the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, which, given half the chance, would consume us all. So, a very natural question to ask is, how does my research actually help anyone? I'll ask you to picture this. A very small black hole orbiting that supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. Gravitational waves would be produced, which would ripple out and eventually reach us at Earth to detect. Those waves would encode information about the center of our galaxy and help us answer questions such as how do supermassive black holes form, possibly even how do galaxies form, and maybe one day we'll be able to answer those bigger questions such as where do we come from?